go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Sober Swole podcast. Tonight we have Marsha Kirshner on the show. She is a online coach, personal trainer, and bodybuilder who is nine weeks out from her NPC wellness physique. Uh, is it wellness physique or just wellness? Well, just well, wellness just division. W- I mean, wellness physique sounds cool, but yeah, it's wellness yeah, division. Her wellness <laughs> division. And uh, if you ever get a chance to look at her on Instagram, she'll do okay in wellness, I'm pretty sure. She, <laughs> she She's bringing the heat. Um, so, so anyway, uh, I think Paul and I are just going to shut up for a little bit and uh, let you get off your chest what you need to get off your chest. Yeah, so, you know, the whole purpose today of me coming on is to talk about a very stigmatic issue, something that a lot of people, especially the older generation, don't want to talk about or admit that this is still going on, but it's very prevalent. It is going on. It's happening. It's a bullet that I dodged for about 37 years. Never thought it happened to me. Never thought that, you know, I would be affected by it this close, let alone myself. You know, it was a regular day. You know, I was going on a blind date. This was before I met my husband and, you know, it was of course, the only reason, honestly, I went is because it was the sixth game of the Spurs NBA playoff game. So who wouldn't want to go to that? Of course. <laughs> so what I thought was going to be a fun night ended up being literally the most traumatic thing I've ever gone through. It was something that I, I, never, I never imagined in a million years walking out of a place not knowing, one, not knowing, waking up not knowing where I'm at, let alone covered in blood, and I could have died. So I was there standing, I remember standing in the corner of a street, had no idea where I was in my own hometown in San Antonio, Texas, thinking, God, why? Just why? Like, what just happened? Um, For those of you that don't know this, this is my first time speaking publicly about uh, my sexual assault. Yeah, it happened to me, and it's real. This does happen. The next few days after that were detrimental, as most of you who have experienced the similar as I, you know that how you wake up from it and how you react to it immediately, it's either you respond or you react to a situation, and I decided to respond. So I, I actually just, me being me, having the work ethic that I have, I went to work. I didn't want to believe that it happened. I was in denial. I am privileged and just very blessed to have an older brother and at the time my old roommate Andy make me go to the hospital and it all became very real you know walking into the hospital and being called a victim every paper you're signing everything that you go through it's victim 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 and I remember thinking this this isn't it I, I am not this I am not a victim and even in the midst of going through that, I knew that I had to not take on the title and not take on the frame that I was given as a victim because I knew at the core of who I was, I am a survivor, you know? And it, it was a horrible process I don't wish on anyone, but it's something that I feel God allowed to happen for a reason, for a purpose. So I connected with my older brother, connected with my pastors, Pastor Warren Beamer, and Jacob Diaz out in San Antonio. And what's crazy is, you know, this that happened to me was directly, it was by a male. So the last thing as a survivor of something like that, the last thing most women want to do is be around men. And I think it's important that we that we touch on that. I think it's important that we say, because, you know, a lot of this, you know, Me Too and, you know, all that stuff, we want to bash men and we become these feminists and we're so just gun ho on bashing men. But I'm going to say this right now, if it weren't for those three men speaking into my life, each one had a strategic place, a strategic manner on how they dealt with it. You know, my older brother, there was not a moment that he wasn't there for me to cry, pray, remind me of specifically the warrior that I am. My pastor, Jacob Diaz, who is also very athletic, he is into Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and knows that, you know, I've been a marathoner, he's a former marathoner before bodybuilding, He knew the way that he could get me out of my head was making me lift, making me lift or going to roll on the mats. My other pastor, Warren Beamer, just sat there quietly, peacefully. Each one had a very specific role. So the next few days I decided to do this because you have a lot of anger. You know, there's a mourning process because there's something that died the day that I walked out of that hotel. I walked out of there and I knew 
there was a part of me that died and I would never get that person back. But I was okay with it. I was okay with the fact that I was, I didn't want to get to a place where I was that person again, but I wanted to be greater, but I couldn't rush that process. I had to walk it out. So the next few days were again, like I said, detrimental. So my <laughs> pastor Jacob knew he'd call me. He's like, girl, we're going to go lift. I, I, I tried canceling on him. I did actually I tried to ghost him a couple of times, but he, they both, both, both my pastors have known me about 24 years or so. He's like, no, girl, you're going to come. Every time I went into the gym, whether it was his gym or Joe's gym in San Antonio at the time, every single time I picked up that weight, I could feel a weight lifted off of me. And that right there is what I poured my heart and soul into. I was already an athlete. I said this a bit right now. I was a marathoner for about 15 years, ran competitively. It was great. It was fun, but it, it wears down your body. Mm -hmm. I poured myself into bodybuilding and to lifting heavy. And that is, that was my therapy. And here we go, you know, fast forward a year later, here I am now about to walk on stage in nine weeks in a bikini and high heels, almost naked in front of thousands of people, which is a true testament as to how health and fitness can not only help you transform your body, but also your mind. The fact, you know, going through a rape, going through something like that, it, it strips away your dignity. It strips away your honor. After, you know, the next few months after I found myself, I've always been a bit of a tomboy, but I found myself wanting to cover myself up even more. I, you know, was just always wearing Doc Martens, back, you know, hats on backwards, no makeup. I didn't want to be seen. I didn't want to attract any attention to myself. I didn't want that from anyone. And I think it's amazing that I've been able to, from one year later, you know, just in a short amount of time, been able to get to the place where I feel mentally and physically ready to walk on stage and say, yo, this is me. Scarred, bruised, frail, all this, but I'm also strong. I'm also a survivor. I'm also a bodybuilder. You don't have to take on that frame. You don't have to make what allow what happened to you be who you are. And that that's what my vision is as a personal trainer, as an online coach, is to help people. I want them to know it's my assignment to walk them through a process of transformation, not only physically, but spiritually, mentally, and emotionally into a place where they are completely whole. Because every one of those things, every one of those things has a certain place. And without one or the other, we're not whole. So I want people to know it is possible to walk into wholeness. Yes, it is gonna, you can't expect your body, you know, to transform from being overweight and then boom, all of a sudden you're in shape, you're ready to bodybuild. No, you're ready to compete. There's a process that comes with it. You know, just like when you go through a rape, when you go through an assault, you cannot rush that process. I remember one thing I told my brother, he would call me every morning on the way to work. And I remember telling him, bro, I don't want, I don't want, you know, I don't want to make this about me. He's like, Marsha, but it is about you. It is about you. And I think it's important that people know that it's okay. It's okay to let this be about you. And it's okay to reach out to your community, to those whom you trust, to those whom you love, to speak into your life. It literally takes a community to get you to the place of brokenness and to wholeness. I was blessed, like I said, with my brother, John, and my two pastors who walked me through that. Um, it, it's also insane how, <laughs> you know, just a few months later, I, I had absolutely no intention. I honestly had given up on the idea of ever getting married, ever having kids. I'm like, I'm cool. You know, I'm 37 years old. I'm good. I, I, that, I, that shit has, has come and gone. I'm good. It's crazy. I never thought and Im imagined in a million years that I would be meeting my husband. Um, so the assault happened in April. I met my husband on, on a party barge in Austin because, you know, that's what we do in Austin. Yeah. <laughs> Always on the lake. Um, and this man walks in, I see him and I just thought, you know, oh, he's just probably another dude. You know, you know what them guys are always after. That's what they're always after. He's a hot bodybuilder. What else are you going to expect? Little did I know that this was the man that God had strategically placed in my life to help launch me into greatness. Like I said, I've been lifting for a few years and always had the desire to compete. Uh, I had just never gone through it. I had a coach as well before, but never, I, I never actually went through with the whole thing. And it's just amazing how, you know, I was able to get to a place where to be able to feel loved, to be able to feel worthy of receiving love, be, be able to receive that guidance and that counsel from 
this man that got placed in my life who happens to be my prep coach as well. So that happened afterwards. Um, it's been interesting, you know, being on prep and being married newlyweds in the midst of COVID and all that stuff. It's been very challenging and interesting, but I feel that even that is strengthening our relationship as well. Um, just the fact to be able to get to a place from April to July, that doesn't happen for everyone. And you know what? That's okay if it doesn't happen like that for others. Everyone's story is different. But I want people to know that it is possible to get to healing. It is possible. You do not have to stay stuck. You don't have to stay stagnant in where you're at. But it takes a first step. It takes a step of reaching out and, again, taking down that guard and allowing others to speak into your life and to love you. And that's what my heart's desire is to do with people, especially this isn't, this isn't something that I read in a book or heard on another podcast. This is real, dude. I went through it. I can relate that this stuff does still happen. So that, that's where, that's where, that's where my heart is for this. Yeah. Rad. I mean, that's, you're strong. You're, you're strong. <laughs> Like, uh, I mean, just, just, just the, just overcoming the victim mindset and, and telling yourself from the beginning that you wanted to overcome the victim mindset is Mm -hmm. something that people have issues with Mm -hmm. years and years still down the road from whatever had happened to them and Mm -hmm. having that self, that self-realization moment is so cool yeah. and I think that you were made in such a way and have such an understanding of yourself even beforehand mm-hmm. before you even started to cope that I think you were you're you're made to help people thank you with, with their similar thank situations and that's that's a gift that really uh, is yeah um, I agree I, I just said this to my husband earlier you know just even if it's just one person that hears my story and it touches one life to me it was worth it and I honestly Y'all, to be honest, a year from now, a year ago, if you would have asked me this, I would have said, no, I don't ever want to go through that again. I wish it would have never happened, but here we are almost, you know, about a year later, I I literally told him today, if it was one life that could be touched, one person that could be transformed by what I went through, then I would go through it all over again. As ugly, as raw and horrible, literally just horrible. It's just so demoralizing, the entire thing just it strips away everything of who you are. You know, you're lying there on a bed as all all these doctors and police officers are making you tell the story, not once, but t- again, over and over and over and over. So it's embedded in your mind that this is who you are. It, it, t- it takes a lot to overcome what's being spoken over you and to know that you can grip down, deep down inside at the core of who you are and draw out that strength that has been in there, that right there, that what, what that dude that night tried to take away from me on his best night, he had to drug me because he knew that if I was completely in my senses, that there was no way that I would be able to be taken down. But even in that moment, I still have the strength. I still have the strength to rise up, you know, to pick myself up off that dirt, to pick myself up off, off that bed, wash the blood off of me, wash that shame off of me and say, all right, let's move forward. Let's move forward. But it does not come. It does not come easy. There are going to be moments just out of nowhere, you know, that I can remember a time specifically where I was at work and thought, you know, I'm good. I'm good. It just hit me all of a sudden. And I called my pastor Warren and I sat in the back of my, my SUV and I just weeped. I weeped and I, it was uncontrollable and I cried and cried. He's known me since I was 12 years old. I'm 38 now. And he just, he just prayed over me. He started speaking directly to my spirit. And that right there, I, I honestly feel that it was not only strengthening me spiritually, but it was also preparing me for the lift that I was about to go get in right after work. He helped change and transform and really grip my mindset and say, you know what, Marsh, that's not you, girl. You get out there. You get out there and you fight back. You you confront these things straight on. And that that's what I do. And you know, it's still it's still a process. If I told you today that I don't have flashbacks, that I don't have issues with those types of things, I'd be a liar. It's a process, just like I said, with transforming your body. It's a process. It takes daily discipline of eating the right thing, drinking your water, doing all your lifts, you know, doing all your cardio. You have to also do a mind check. 
all right, so the moment you have a negative thought or a moment that something comes to your mind, you have to be able to be strong enough to be in that moment because you don't want to ignore them. It's really important. I always tell people this. You can't, you can't just take the good and ignore, ignore the bad. You have to be realistic. You have to sit in the middle of that funk, let it permeate, acknowledge it, and then come up with a resolution of how am I going to use this to launch me into greatness? How? But it takes action. It takes real action, you know? So that that's what I do every single day. You know, when I wake up and meditate, I pray. I specifically pray over, you know, my mind and my spirit so that I can equip my body to go out there and kill it every single time. Yeah. yeah that's great. Yeah. I mean, and it, so just to kind of, Mm-hmm. Pull in a little bit, yeah. especially when you're dealing with with uh, other people that are wanting to be bodybuilders. Mm-hmm. I have not met a sane bodybuilder. <laughs> have you? Um, like, we're mean, all crazy in our own way, right? <laughs> but you know what I mean. We're all radical yep. and extremists. Yeah, I mean, this is our passion. Yep. Think about something that you love, you do absolutely anything and everything. I mean, there are days where I'm, you know, up at 6 a.m. And sometimes when I'm lifting at 12 a.m. and doing my cardio at 2 a.m., it's a, it's a desire and it's a passion. You have to be willing to do anything. I, I tell our team all the time, if you haven't cried, if you haven't bled, if you haven't sweat in some way, you are, you have not earned your spot on that stage. You haven't, you haven't. Just like healing, dude, it's going to take you going through all the ugly crap to get to the point where you can have victory. Yep. But you cannot get to that mountaintop without going through that valley. You just can't. You can't skip it. So, no, I mean, is anyone truly fully sane? Nah, no, we're all no. crazy in our own way. No. So, yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> we did an episode uh, in our first year doing it when we were piddling around and still trying to figure this out. I mean, we're still trying <laughs> to figure it out for being real. But... Uh, we did an episode called, uh, it was trading addictions Mm -hmm. and it was, uh, if we like was giving up our addictions for fitness and being addicted to fitness, the better move, that kind of thing. We, and we bounced back and forth on that. Yeah. And, and, uh, I think that that works in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Um, I made a suggestion to a a gentleman on one of the, the, the sober Reddit communities. I said, you don't have to do what I did but I would suggest that you find a discipline that yeah. can teach you a better mindset. Absolutely. And, I agree. And, and just dive deep into that discipline that teaches you your better mindset and use that discipline and things that you learn from it to cope with your situation and, what, sure. and what you're mm-hmm. getting through. Mm-hmm. Um, I like what you said too, because about switching addictions and trust me, I've been asked that question. Well, don't you think that, you know, you could, that was, that was your coping mechanism. That's cool. Marsh. Congrats, bro. You found something to cope. No, dude. No, like this gives me life. Yep. Lifting, you know, eating right, drinking all my water, doing this lifestyle. It, it literally gives me life. And I always say, if it's not going to edify my mind, if it's not going to edify my spirit, my soul and my body, I ain't even touching it. Yep. I'm not going to touch it. And you know, I'm, I, I'm also a preacher's kid. I had never had mentioned that before. My daddy's a reverend nice. in San Antonio. So also kind of my upbringing and why I am the way I am, but we're preacher's kids are a breed of our own. We know how to survive. My, my grandpa's <laughs> a Southern Baptist pe- uh, preacher so, and my parents were youth pastors. I was there when the church doors were open. I kind of went in a little different direction though. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it happens. It happens, dude. But we're all, somehow we all always still connect with each other. Yep. But yeah, you know, if it doesn't edify you, you know, it, it, there's, there's some balance, you know, I've never been a big drinker or, you know, into that kind of nightlife. It doesn't, I, it's honestly kind of boring to me, which is crazy because I love to dance. I love music, love to dance, but that lifestyle has just never been edifying. There's nothing, nothing good ever comes from it, you know, um, which is gnarly too, is that shortly after my assault, you know, when we would go out in Austin, it's almost as if I still wore this victim, um, I guess just like, I, it's like people knew they, they just, or maybe I just wore this garment of, you know, victim. Like I was still preyed upon. I remember I got grabbed by some dude, you know, at, at this club that I went to with some of our friends, um, in Austin and thinking, dude, what the heck, man, I was literally just standing here talking 
to somebody and out of nowhere, this dude grabs my butt. And of course, you know, all my friends are bodybuilders that didn't end well for him. No. Um, no. Walk outside with my boyfriend at the time, who's now my husband and this dude, someone else comes up and does this. And I'm just thinking, you know, what is it about me that I'm giving off this energy? Like, what is it that I'm doing that I'm still walking in this brokenness that allows people to think that they can do something like that to me, which is very humbling and very sobering to think, dude, you still have something to work on because you're still wearing this garment of disgrace and you're attracting that. And, you know, I, it, it takes, it really takes your, you, it takes a strong person to be honest with themselves. And, to, you know, especially when you think like, I want to go, I want to talk to people. I want to help people. I want somebody to, you know, be touched by this, but you got to realize that it's like we were talking earlier. It's all about timing. It wasn't the right time. I hadn't even dealt with it completely. So there was no way that I could use my story to edify others or to help others if I hadn't even healed completely. Does that make sense? It does. It makes perfect sense. Yeah. Um, Cause uh, Paul and I both have uh, basically just, opened up the can and dumped it out, out on the yeah. on the show a couple times. I mean, uh, a little bit more about us. I've known Paul for over 10 years. Um, he knew me when I first moved out to Arizona with uh, mm-hmm. all the guys that I got out of the Marine Corps with. And he was one of the one of the bar backs and bouncers at the at the club that I got into before I turned 21. And, you know, <laughs> and, you know, I mean, we we've, we've both been through a roller coaster of stuff. I sent you just a brief overview of uh what I'm about and how I got there. Yeah. Um, I won't, I won't speak to Paul's side of things because that's none of my business, but, uh, <laughs> um, finding, finding your, your purpose beyond the life you used to live or how do I want to put that? Like how, how you are perceived and changing how you are perceived by other people is probably the hardest part. I think. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Because um, yeah. I was a rip roaring drunk cokehead for years. Mm-hmm. And there's there's people that I thought were really, really close to me that won't even utter my name in a conversation anymore mm-hmm. because I completely changed my life over. Yeah. Um, change looks scary to a lot of people. Well, change sucks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, There's a, have you ever heard the saying complacency kills? Yeah. Okay. So that's a, for people that don't know, that's a, it's a military term that you're, you're taught as you're being trained and you get deployed and things. It's where you get so comfortable in everything that you're doing that you quit paying attention Mm -hmm. and the enemy Mm -hmm. kills you. Now, the, then I've expanded that into the only thing that grows in a comfort zone is complacency. Yeah, it's true. So yeah. if, if you aren't, <laughs> you, fun over. <laughs> if you aren't, uh, if you aren't sometimes on your hand, like even on your belly and pulling yourself through the gravel and broken glass, I'm not saying all the time, but sometimes you got to do that shit to, yeah, to get, sure. to get up the mountain. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Gro- growth isn't easy, mm-hmm. you know, and Growing out of that, I heard this, uh, I heard this, uh, I don't know if you know this pastor in San Antonio, John Hagee, he used to tell this, uh, this parable, I don't even think it's real, I think he made it up, but it's good. He talked about this donkey, and um, everyone had written this donkey off as useless, as worthless, and they threw him out in the field, and they had a big pile of trash, big hole of trash, that they would throw that, all the trash in and burn it up, and they decided, oh, this donkey's useless, and how many times do people tell us we're useless? Oh, dude, you know, even women, oh, you back, oh, she, oh she, she, she got raped, don't touch, don't, don't get, don't, you don't want to go there, she's got some baggage, she's going to have some mental issues, yo, you don't want that, they threw that donkey into that pit, and they started just piling trash on that donkey, every day, and that donkey stood on that trash, every day, every day, and just little by little, it would rise up a little higher, just a little higher, until one day, that pit was so full, that donkey used that very trash, that very label of useless and worthless to walk out and show them all, I am worth it. I do deserve to live. I do have a place in this world. And that is exactly how people like us who have gone through real crap 
rise. You have either, either this stuff's going to break you, dude, or it's going to make you, you can't deny it. It happened. You can't change the history. All you can do right now is tr find some way to rise up and prove to this world that you do have a voice, that you do matter, that what happened to you is not who you are, but you got to get to that place and actually doing something to prove that to everyone else. And then it's messy. It's messy and it's ugly and it stinks. It's nasty, but it's possible. It is. That is 100% correct. <laughs> like, you know, um, I'm not, I'm not trying to be the only guy talking to you here, but, uh, okay. the, the amount of times I was told no. Yeah. Um, even before everything I was told, I was told in high school, I would never amount to anything mm -hmm. by a few people that were pretty close to me. And I was told that, uh, even if I, uh, went to boot camp, I was wasting the government's time because I'd never make it through. And, and if I, and if I, you know, even if I did make it through, I'd, I'd do something stupid and die or, you yep. know, and. You're going to screw it up somehow. Yep. Um, yep. when it, when it, I was, then I was told that there was no, there was no shot of me getting sober. There was no shot in me losing the weight. There was no way in hell I'd get on a stage. There's no way I'd help other people get on a stage. You know, it's just, it's like, I, I kind of like being told I can't. Yeah, like, same. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it feel it fuels. It definitely fuels you because that very that very word that the moment someone says you can't do it, you take it as watch me. Mm -hmm. Watch me. Not only am I gonna do it, but I'm freaking blow this thing out the water. So stand back and watch because I'm gonna put in all that time, all that work, and you gotta drown out those voices, man. Mm -hmm. You have to. Either again, as a preacher's kid, I, I I learned this quick. People are going to love you. That's awesome. Let them. People are going to hate you. That's awesome. Let them. Either way, the words that are spoken over, over you do not have to have power over you. They do not have to have a place in your life. They do not have to take residence and permeate and grow into something unless you allow them. Now, if you allow those words to take control and actually allow them to become who you are, that's, that's your fault, man, because we all have that power to stop it. We have that, <laughs> come on, we all have the power to say, nah, dude, I'm going to get up and I'm going to do something. You know, it's also said that the power of life and death is in the tongue, which I wish a lot of people would learn this. You think they would as we age, a lot of people don't, but it's true. We literally have the power to either destroy completely a family, a marriage, a person by telling them, nah, dude, you're not going to amount to anything. But we also have the power to speak to someone's life and to tell them, dude, you are worth it. You are something you do deserve this. And it's up to us just as much as it's up to us to get to the place of healing and wholeness. It's up to us to take responsibility and accountability for our own words that we speak on others because they are going to affect them in a real way. And that's something that we need to realize as a whole. You know, there's a lot of people where we all have differences of opinion. You know what? That's cool. That's what makes this world beautiful. Is we agree? If we all agreed on the same thing, life would be hella boring. But it's, I think it's awesome that we don't. Yep. But the thing is, it's up to us to take on, you know, what is spoken over us and into our lives. So the very fact that, you know, you are able to learn how to shut the voice of the naysayers and drown out that noise, and use that as fuel to elevate you, to actually get you to the place where you are sober now, which congrats, dude. That's Thank awesome. You. Also, Thank you for serving. Pretty dope. It's awesome. It, 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 it's a process though too that right there but it's a decision it's a personal decision ourselves to either allow something to weigh us down or for us to outweigh that sorry for these yahoos hitting so, uh, sound effects in, in the middle of your awesome okay. point it's all good <laughs> no um so which uh which show is it you're doing in nine weeks which one is that i know the npc got all yeah. kinds of wiki i'm doing the adela up. classic yeah, that's Super right. stoked. It got moved because Adela got moved around. Yeah, it did. I was supposed to compete in June and mm -hmm. it got moved to um, October, which is which was fun in the middle of COVID. <laughs> we're still we're still pushing. Do we still try to find a way to, you know, stay on prep and eat healthy and find a way to lift? I'm very grateful to Rob and Esther, the owners of Big Techs, who are like they family are awesome to me. People. And, you know, it, I, even though we weren't able to see each other, 
every day how we were before when we were in quarantine the community that we have we're all still super connected to each other you know checking on each other making sure we're all doing great and yeah I, my husband was of course a huge a huge huge support because you know obviously we live together mm-hmm. yeah, it was very tempting to eat to eat crap in the middle of quarantine but he held me accountable and thankfully because once as soon as things opened up again there we were just back at it full force and the show got moved to October and dude, the show goes on. Yes, Here we does. go. I see. I met Adela Garcia backstage at the <laughs> South Southeast Texas championship in 2016 uh-huh. when she, uh, she was guest posing and she did her, uh, her aerial silks. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And then, uh, I was at her show in 2018 and she scared the shit out of me. Really? Yeah, because because you, you forget how small she is, right? I know, right? <laughs> and I was wor- I was working a, a booth for a company that no longer exists, but uh, she came up and like tapped me on my shoulder, and you know how you go to turn around and you look to see a person? Yeah. So I thought like a, like a spirit had touched me, and like like <laughs> something. <laughs> like, I, I'm not I'm not that tall. I'm five nine on my best days, you know. <laughs> so I turn around. What what? And then there's hi Jesus. <laughs> <You know? laughs> God, what? <laughs> and she's she is incredibly sweet. Um, I think yeah. I, I think yeah. her running her running that show in Austin is I think that needs to go on forever. Um, yeah, because because she puts on a good show. It's run really really well. Um, I haven't heard any competitors really complaining too much about anything flowing not smoothly about the Adela Garcia Classic. Ever. Yeah, I've only heard great things. Yep. So, I mean, um, so th- is this going to be your first show? Yeah, it is. I have a funny story to tell you, too, of how I met Adela. I went to a posing clinic at, at Hog, actually, um, a couple months ago. I, I didn't even know. I, you know, I didn't know who I was with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she is super sweet. I had no idea who she was at the yep. time. So I'm in the restroom and waiting to go in. And she comes out and she's like, hey, sweetie, there's no toilet paper and don't go into that stall. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> but she goes and gets me paper towel. And she's like, here you go. You'll be okay. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm like, oh, that was a really nice lady. I go back to the room where they're doing the posing clinic. I'm like, oh my God, that's Adela. What? Uh, here, here, I didn't realize that. Here's this so 10 time really Miss cool. Fitness like, She's Olympia. super sweet and just this real, real humor interaction. And we joke about it now. Like, yo, if you need toilet paper, I got you. <laughs> Pretty funny stuff. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be my first show, and which is super exciting too, because it's the first year that the wellness division um, is debuting as well in bodybuilding. So it's super exciting to be able to say, I'm going to compete in 2020, which has been a crap year for all of us, yep. you know? Um, also at a show, you know, that my husband and I both respect tremendously, and to be able to compete in wellness, which is like the newest division, it's super, super exciting. And, it, and just, just based on the pictures of your physique, that's, that's the move. Um, you're, you're, you're definitely got the, the bottom heavy look that they're looking for, for sure. Like you've got some pretty sizable legs on you, sis. That's, that's the thing. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. So I'm, I'm kind of excited just even to see the pictures of you on stage. I think you're going to look great. Thank so, you. I appreciate and, that. I appreciate all the support I can get. Hell yeah. And you picked a really great show for your first show. Um, and it's right in your backyard pretty much. Yeah. That's, it's going to be in Austin. So that's great. It's San Antonio's home and Austin's second home. So it's still in Texas. We're in God's country. So we're going to be just fine. I, I mean, you're not making the, making the crazy rookie mistakes and driving halfway across the state and, cra- and right? stressing yourself <laughs> yeah, out. So that's, no. that's great. I'll tell you the truth, uh, San Antonio isn't my favorite place. I've never had a, I've never had a good, uh, <laughs> never had a good experience in San Antonio. I've always had bad times, except Sorry. except for when I drove to one of my athletes' houses and I stole her scale. Okay, well yeah. there you go. Yeah. So Glad I mean, we can help there, out in some there, way. There's my there's there's my positive San Antonio experience. I, I stole a scale from a lady one time. <laughs> well, you saying that you clearly have not been to a Spurs game because I mean, dude, and pop we trust. Come on. I grew up in central Illinois at the time when the Chicago Bulls were the Chicago Bulls. So, uh, I see. You okay. Can, you can Spurs it all day, but <laughs> it, it, it means nothing to me. <laughs> and close. <laughs> this conversation's <laughs> over. <laughs> um, so are you, are you looking to make this, are you just looking to embrace the experience of this all, or is it something that you're looking to eventually go pro in? 
or you just, Dude, I mean, that would be amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would love to do that. That'd be great. You know, we'll see what God has in store. Uh, I don't want this to be my last show one and done deal. Um, but again, like I mentioned earlier, my husband and I are newlyweds and, you know, we'll either get ready, you know, do off season again, reverse diet and compete again, or maybe we'll have a baby next year. We'll Ooh. see what happens. Ooh. Um, I, my, my daughter just turned one and, um, there's, you know, these, both of these guys who are being, uh, quiet, they're, they're both fathers themselves, but there is something about seeing your kid and it's a whole, it's a whole different type of love. And then you're like, it's rad. I mean, yeah. even if you have to go like buy one or whatever, I suggest it, you know, like, uh, <laughs> yeah. closest thing I have are my nieces and nephews, my older brother's kids and I are so close and which is, which is crazy. We just sent off his eldest daughter to university this, just this Sunday. Um, is so she, is yeah, she going to the real school or is she going to that as a father and she's, you're talking about a very just stoic Latino man, just strong and, you know, crossfitter. Like you don't, you don't mess with him. You don't mess with him, but to see how gentle he is with his children is so admirable that, and I can't wait to be a parent. I can't wait to, you know, implement everything that I learned from him and his wife being a mama. Yeah, and I, I was in children's ministry as well for a while. And so I just love children. They're they're I say they're the closest thing you get at the face of God. So, yep. They really are. Yep. For sure. I mean, you definitely learn something new every day. I think, uh, Everybody can uh, attest to that. Yeah, something new on what to do or what not to what, do. What, what to do, what not to do, how their personality is developing over time. and Yeah. Because my poor kid, my, my, poor, my poor fiance, Ruth acts just like me, but with a, with a vagina instead. And she, yeah, she it jumped. happens. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. My, I think our child, whether it's a boy or girl, I think they're going to be just as obnoxious and rambunctious and lively as my husband, which I'm okay with that. Yeah. I think he's going to be the fun, the fun parent for sure. <laughs> he's the younger one. You know, I'm 30, 38. He's 27, so 28 now, actually. So well, happy birthday, buddy. <laughs> yeah, he's a, where there's a 10-year difference. I'm like, all right, honey. You have the energy. You can deal with that. <laughs> They're all. I can. T- I can totally tell that's what's going to happen. I'm okay with that too. That's fine. I tend to be a little bit deeper. I'm the one that's, especially at night. I tend to get on these really deep tangents. He's like, "Hey, it's time to go to bed. <laughs> Come on." <laughs> but I can see him staying up late with the kids, and I, I'm looking forward to that day. That that's going to be fun. Well, I wish you nothing but the best, and I hope that happens for you for real. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> um, so. I just want to touch on it real quick because I, I also told you on the text, but uh, I really appreciate how you guys are handling my little my little kid slash kid sister, um, Bree. Thank you. She's yeah. uh, she's a special young lady, and uh, yeah, whatever she's gonna end up doing is gonna be rad. And I'm glad that she's working with someone actually in person too, yeah. because I think uh, I think a lot of people use the online coach moniker just to make money off of bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, you, people forget about that. You know, even though it's a virtual, there still has to be this, this connection, this community. And, you know, what I love about, you know, my husband and our team is it, we're a community. We really do treat each other like a family. I always talk to them. You know, there are days where I, I will pick up the, I'll pick, there are certain things that he speaks to directly and certain things that I speak to directly. And, um, I think also my years of ministry, I, I know when it's time, all right, I'm going to step in and I'm going to, I'm going to talk to them and get them out of their head. And, and each one of us, you know, just like, you know, we talk about, you know, as, as kids growing up in church and stuff, the body of Christ, each person is instrumental and plays a huge part in what we're doing. So community is everything, dude. You know, we have to encourage each other. We have that camaraderie, iron sharpens iron, you know, got to put that in there. Cause it's, it's the truth. And we have our team lifts every other, every other Sunday as well. So we all get to come together, even though we're training separately, you know, those that, you know, have access, people will come down from, you know, Austin, from San Antonio to Austin, just to lift with our team. And it's cool that we have that real human interaction with each other. Uh, but even with our clients online um, who are in other States, you know, I have the privilege of, coaching, you know, people who are, you know, in Tennessee and other, other places as well, which is really cool that yeah. 
we have also a community forum. We have these, you know, calls with them, just Zoom meetings and stuff, just kind of touch base with them and let them know, dude, like we're all in it together. We all may be going after, you know, a different, a different goal, you know, some to compete, some to transform their body, some to just, you know, get over an eating disorder, whatever the case may be. We're all, we're all aiming for a goal and it could be different, but we're still all in this together. Yep. So yeah, thank you for, thank you for your kind words. Cause my husband who is, you know, my prep coach, like I told you earlier in our team, he pours his heart and soul into each person, dude, each person. And I, I, I love seeing that he, it's almost like, um, it's almost like watching him be like how he might be when he's a dad. Yeah. You know, there was, uh, it was two weekends ago seeing, it was Sheila Brown. We were able, which is awesome. We were able Sheila to, rules, yeah, guys. <laughs> pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rules. We were able to each have a private session that he set up with for each one of us. And I, I love that he, I love that I'm grateful that he did it for me. I'm his wife, but you know, he better do that kind of stuff for me. <laughs> I'm his wife. But to see that he took the time to sit through each session with each athlete, dude, record each one, take notes, talk to each one. Uh, that's just something beautiful because I can tell you a lot of coaches won't do that. Mm -mm. All right. They'll set up, they might, you know, Hey, yeah, let me connect you to so-and-so and you go pose, dude. You're, you're good. You got this. The dude sat there literally for what, five, six hours on a Saturday and, and was there with each one of them. And I love that he walks out the process with them. Like whether it's in the gym, you know, whether it's talking on the phone, texting, whatever it is, but, or sitting there on a Saturday morning, all the way through an afternoon for each posing session. It's really cool to see how, how he truly loves each person and takes each person very serious. I, it's, it's, it's beautiful to me to sit back and watch and also to be able to be on the team and to have that honor and privilege to be hand in hand with him leading our people into greatness. I can't even tell you how fulfilling that is. It's, it's a, pretty cool stuff. It, it really, I, I mean, I can speak on to that. It, it really yeah. is because I mean, I don't have, I don't have the opportunity currently to do that in person, real interaction like I used to, mm -hmm. but there is something about literally taking someone by the hand and saying, no, no, we've got this. Come on, you know, and picking them up. And, you know, when they're, they're not feeling like walking that extra mile is like, I'll help you. We'll, yeah. We'll get through it together. We got this. Absolutely. And if, yeah. If you truly, if you are helping someone through, I don't care if it's, powerlifting, CrossFit, bodybuilding, uh, two hand touch cribbage. If you aren't, if you are a coach that doesn't take a truly genuine caring approach to how you treat the people who have trusted you, mm -hmm. you're garbage. Yeah, you're absolutely. Garbage. And then I've seen it, I've seen it both ways and an extreme. One of my favorite things that I used to do was when I didn't have a client or something and as I would watch how the other trainers and coaches would interact with their athletes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, when I first started personal training, it was down in Victoria, Texas. You've ever been through that wonderful town? Yeah. Uh, there ain't nothing out there. Yep. Yes, sir. I was, I started out at, I started out at pure fitness mm -hmm. and I learned a lot from, uh, Mike Pena, uh, Andy Stanford, and then my, uh, my buddy, John Lara. And I was just how they interacted with people. And how, mm -hmm. you know, you, and you could tell when they had off days, when they were having self doubts about themselves and when they were like yeah. on it and, you know, then working at the hog, I got to watch big Dave work. Um, and I don't know if you ever had any interactions with him or even got to see him before he died. But I did. He was my, one of my really close friends coach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, watching him work is like watching was it was like watching a surgeon with like the best hand. Yeah. And so I mean I I tried to like steal as much of that shit as I could. So. <laughs> yeah. But I mean and then uh, my buddy out there too, uh John Arthur, he mm -hmm. uh he has he may not look like it or seem like it, but he has the biggest heart you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. A lot of bodybuilders look like they're a bunch of big a-holes, but they're not. No, he has a huge <laughs> heart. I mean, like he's got his flaws like every other man does. Every other sure. human being does, you know, because he's got his own crap that he works through and everything too. Yeah. But when it gets down deep into how he really gives a shit about people that he's working with, it, that was something yeah. That was something I learned from him too. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. I, like uh, 
what's the, what's the saying? You, you can learn something from everyone you meet. There's, the, you, there's some, you, there's something that you can learn from everyone you meet. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's what you do with that knowledge that will either benefit you or hinder you down the, down the Absolutely. Road. Yeah. Yeah. I definitely believe that. Um, so, yeah. so you were in the running community before. Mm-hmm. Did you ever run into a master sergeant? Uh, no, Sergeant Major, pardon me, Sergeant Major Dana uh, Gilroy? No, I don't think so. Okay. Um, I met her through uh, the FitOps Foundation, and she was actually one of my athletes for a while, and she w- she did those extreme marathons. Then when her and her husband both would run marathons out and around out there, I was just, I was just curious. Yeah, no, yeah. I didn't. Well, running, she- running was a whole other beast. It was a lot of fun. But no, I, I, I don't know who that is, but I'm sure they're a wonderful person. Well, I was asking you a question like I was acting like San Antonio was a small town with 30 people in it. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, we treat we act like we're a small town, but mm-hmm. we're not. No, no. What's um, so mm-hmm. what is your what is your big vision? So we've talked about possibly competing again, um, mm-hmm. becoming a mother. What is. What is the big vision? What are you going to do with your past experiences and how you're already trying to uplift people? What is the the big goal? Yeah, the goal is to continue to grow our business. My husband and I, you know, Kushner Fitness and take people who are, you know, whether they're first time competitors or returning competitors, get them back on stage, you know, to be healthy first. We talked about that, you and I privately on how important that is Mm -hmm. to make sure people are actually healthy and not, you know, getting up there prematurely. For me, um, my passion is to continue to help not only men or not only women, but also men to transform, like I said, their mind, their spirit, their soul, and their body, and just take this all over the world, dude, and continue to impact as many lives as possible to grow our business into something that is worldwide. Um, This is our passion. It's amazing how, you know, you hear the saying all the time, you know, if it feels like work, that's your job. But if you go and you do what you love every single day, that's when you know you're walking in your destiny. This is our destiny. And we're so privileged. We are so blessed to be able to be walking in our true destiny. This is life. This is this is a lifeline to who we are. We eat, breathe, and live this every single day. And I cannot ever see us not being part of the bodybuilding community. And I mean, that's what we, that's just what we do. This is what we do. So the the long term, the big vision is to make this and make this greater. Yeah. No, that's that's amazing. So, Thanks. yeah, no, that's that that uh, that hit that hit close to home. Yeah. And because that was that's a lot of how I I I try and want to do things. And I you know still I mean like life has kind of come at me a little bit weird and I've had to learn different things mm-hmm. and, uh, approach stuff totally differently, but that's, uh, that is what it is sometimes. Yeah. I mean, life's going to throw us curveballs sometimes, you know, just like we, with my assault, there's no way I would have ever thought that would happen to me, but yeah, we just got to pick up the pieces and put back that puzzle, that foundation back together and, use that, you know, as a launching pad into, into the greatness, into something better, you know, into our true destiny. So, yeah, I mean, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? The world could come crashing down, but that doesn't change the fact that we're still survivors. We're still strong. We're still world changers. We're still amazing athletes. We can still conquer the world, even though it's all crashing down around us, we can still rise above anything. And take our destiny and our passion and, and impact the world. You know, that, that, that stuff right there just gets me. It gets me excited. I just want to go lift right now. <laughs> <laughs> I got a question for you. Yeah. So I'm thinking on everything that you're wanting to do, which everything that you're saying is an incredible story that you're wanting to live out. Have you ever thought about possibly getting some type of counseling degree so that way you can incorporate within your, you and your husband's business where mm-hmm. obviously you learn from your experience that you had and learn through lifting weights. You're able to cope through that and work through that experience mm-hmm. where I think a lot of women could really benefit from that. And the fact that one, you're able to 
coach them from the physical standpoint, but also have the knowledge, one, from your own experience, but two, being able to have the degree behind it and be able to help women in, in that sense and then gateway into the physical weightlifting. Yeah, um, I think that's something that, you know, I have been, I've been asked that by a lot of people, actually. Um, and I, I probably will pursue that. Um, again, just kind of delve back into my my past. Um, I, I grew up as a preacher's kid, grew up in ministry, and have served under some amazing ministers, you know, Cornerstone Church and Community Bible Church, and have had the, had the opportunity to be a mentor and a counselor to so many people I never in a million years would have thought that I would be using my voice to talk about sexual assault or rape or those kinds of things. But yeah, when it comes to counseling, um, yeah, that's definitely something that my husband and I have actually spoken about as well. Yeah, because yeah. I definitely, I mean, something that I've always shared with people in my experience was that, you know, I went to rehab one time and I remember just being in so much pain and just misery. And the counselor at the time that was talking to me was saying he understood exactly what I was going through. And never once said he had been an addict, never once said he had experienced withdrawals or anything like that. He only knew what I was feeling from words that he had read in a book. And yeah. to me, in order for, and this is just my opinion, me only, but in order for someone to convey a message, you have to have better gone through it yourself, especially with a situation like this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm glad that you said that because it is true. I, you know, after I, after my assault, one of the things that, you know, the last thing they did was hand me a pamphlet to a, um, my rape crisis advocate. And I thought to myself, who the hell is this person? Like, wh what do they know about this stuff? I mean, these are people who, you know, I'm sure they have a passion and they care, but they've never gone through this. And I think that's why I believe that's why I feel so passionate about it is because I live those ugly moments. It, like I said earlier, this isn't something I read in a book or heard and thought, Oh, you dude, that's a, that, that, that right there. That's an organization I can get behind. You know, that's something I want to raise awareness for. No, dude, this is me telling you my story, bro. I was right there with you. I, I walked it out. You know, I, I, I really get it. You know, like, it's not like I made this stuff up or I think that, you know, these prolific words are going to make you somehow feel inspired and enlightened. No, dude, I'm going to tell you it, it sucks. <laughs> it sucks and it hurts and it screws with your mind and it's, it makes you feel defeated. But I was there. I lived it out. And I feel that that's what has equipped me. You know, there's a saying that, you know, God doesn't call the equip. He equips the called. I didn't have no idea that I'd be called to speak about something like this. Little did I know that that pain that I endured was going to be the very tool that equipped me to be able to speak into other people's lives. You know, it, it does make a difference when the person sitting across the table from you, you can tell when they say, I, I understand, I get it. No, you don't. No, you don't. You, you don't, dude. You never, you didn't, you didn't feel that. You didn't have to sign a paper saying you were a freaking victim. So no, don't tell me right now that you understand what that feels like because you don't, you know, so for me, when I went through that, I, I definitely, I can see where you're coming from having to go through counseling afterwards and talk to people who you can tell it's just a job for them. They don't care, you know, like maybe they do, maybe they don't, who knows, but you can tell when someone's heart and soul is in it. And you know, that, that's, that's where, that's where, you know, I come in and I, I speak to women about this stuff and I, I can truly, I feel what they feel. You know, I tell them, dude, when you, when you hurt, I hurt. When you rejoice, I rejoice. When you're down, I'm down. When you're up, dude, I'm right there with you. When you cry, my heart is broken because I have felt that exact same thing you have felt. And you can't fake that, you know? You, you just can't fake that. No, that's, uh, you know, empathy at its finest. And Absolutely, a lot of people, uh, yeah. Words are words. And yeah. you, you can say as much shit as you want behind it, but unless you have, like you said, that passion behind it or mm -hmm. the availability to convey what had happened to you, because that in itself is a, a huge strength that a lot of people don't. And I'm speaking for myself because these two fine gentlemen here have had to explain to me multiple times that I'm a good dude. And it's because I have not been able to shut off those voices in the back of my head yet. You know, I, I just got out of the loony bin last month for attempted suicide. 
And so, you know, I'm, I'm your age. I'm still trying to figure shit out. And the fact that you're able to so openly and so passionately speak of your experience speaks volumes of who you are as a character. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Absolutely. I'm glad you're here. So you, I want you to know your presence matters, dude. And I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad that I'm able to speak with you right now. I appreciate you that. Thank you. It's, it's such an honor to be speaking with y'all today. Well, it's an honor. Your story is. Uh, I'm proud of you. You're doing. You're doing a lot better than you think you are. You I, really are. I appreciate that. There Thank it you. is, right there. <laughs> got, to, got to hear from somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> Here, a complete yeah. stranger just told you everything we've been telling you. For <laughs> <laughs> love it. I do that to my husband all the time. He'll hear something great. I'm like, dude, I told you that. It's like, yeah, I know, but you know, when you hear it from somebody else, I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I get it. But yeah. Yeah, I constantly go through that with my fiance. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's it's always good to hear good things from your significant other, and like you know, because it's like, oh, cool. But then, like, when you hear from someone that's like not even involved, you're like, oh, fucking cool. yes. You know? Yeah, oh, they're not just telling me that because they love me, or you know, they they want to they want some brownie points. No, dude, you really mean this. Mm -hmm. I I tell them all the time. I see greatness in you, dude. I I really do. And it's awesome though when he hears it from other people as well. Man, I. Hearing the way our team speaks about him just gets and my art. My eyes kind of start to sweat a little sometimes. It's really cool to, to see that. But yeah, having that again, it just goes back to how, you know, the power of words, dude, the power of our words are, man, we're so, we're, we're so impactful either for negativity or positivity, dude. Like we, I mean, if I told you right now, man, you suck. Like what the hell are you doing on this show? Why are you even talking like that kind that kind of, Dang, dude, that hurt a little. But when you use your voice for, for for a real reason, you use your voice for a purpose and you tell someone, dude, I see greatness in you. You know, I see excellence in you. Where you're at is awesome. But guess what? You only scratch the surface, bro. Like you're headed to somewhere great. I'm going to be right there with you. That right there, it ignites something inside of you. It gets you, it really gets you going. It makes you want to go out and conquer the world. It makes you want to be better. It makes you want to elevate yourself. Yeah, that, that stuff just I, I could I could talk about that stuff all day. Well <laughs> tell your tell your old man slash young man husband that I like his look. I think uh Yeah, I, I like his look he's, too. He's a well built gentleman. Yeah. Well let's he's see. A, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a cutie. He's a keeper. I'll keep this one. <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting right here next to me. <laughs> well, if it ever loads up, I'll show you. No, he's worked like he's worked really hard. His physique shows it. Yeah, I'll yeah, call. he's literally the hardest working man I've ever met. You know, whether it's his work ethic or lifting, <laughs> dude. There's no way that I could slack as an athlete because I got him right behind me, pushing mm -hmm. me and pulling me and getting me up when I don't want to go do fast to cardio and. <laughs> I'm a lollygagger. It takes me 20 minutes to just leave the house. Yep, that's that's my honey. Yeah, that's, that's him a big right boy. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> he's pretty awesome. He really is. His strength and his his enthusiasm. Just I always tell him like what exudes out of you, dude. Like ah, just excites me. And we're just one year in. We've been together a year, and it's exciting to see what we've accomplished together in one year. But, dude, I'm stoked to see what we're going to accomplish coming, you know, the next years to come. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, and I'm happy and excited yeah. for both of y'all. I really am. I'm, glad, I'm glad that there's a, a power couple out there that has, a, and I'm just to preface, I'm not talking shit about any other power couples, but I'm just saying I'm glad that there's a power couple out there that has their head on right and is in the business for the right reasons. Thank you. you, you Thank know, you. You know, I have to preface things like that because, you know, folks will hear it and get butt hurt and I don't, I don't need it. Yeah, feel you that. Know? <laughs> Again, we're going to use our voice for good things. That's right. We're going to use right. our voice for a good thing. <laughs> That's right. Well, um, unless the boys got anything else, uh, do you have any, any companies or anything that you need to shout out or places people to follow you and get a hold of you? Yeah, I mean, y'all can check us out um, on our website, kushnerfitness.com. Um, follow myself on Instagram, um, Mrs. Kushner Fitness. I can't tell you how stoked I was to change my name to that. <laughs> um, and my husband, um, it's pretty easy. It's um, Kushner Fitness on Instagram as well. Um, if ever y'all are in the Austin area, you have personal invitation for me to come check out literally the best gym in the world, Big Tex. That's home right there. That's family. Come on. <laughs> 
I know. I know. <laughs> I feel you. Oh. But yeah, if y'all ever want to come out, everyone is welcome. We'll treat you guys like your family. It's I, Rob and Esther, just amazing dude. I, I had the the privilege of sitting down with them just a couple, a couple, I guess a week or so ago. And I really had to talk to many people about my sexual assault. And I don't know if you've ever met Rob. Yeah, I met them both. <laughs> he, uh, I, well, dude, I, I always say this. I, he's a, he's a beast. I would pay money just to see him fight someone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is literally the most intimidating man. He's huge. You see like, him, and then he speaks, and you're like, "Whoa, this dude! <laughs> he has the heart of a freaking teddy bear. He's so gentle." And it was really cool to talk to him about and Esther, you know, his wife, about my experience, and to see this, you know, this huge, just strong man sit there and listen so intently and so willingly. And I told him, you know, one of the things that I love about big techs, it, it's so simple, but to me, it meant the world. And they had no idea, you know, we have cameras everywhere and the doors lock at 9 PM. And I've always felt safe there. And it's very important, especially, you know, as a survivor of sexual assault, you don't feel safe anywhere, dude. You always got to be looking around. You always got to you wonder like, oh, well, you know, is someone, is this person going to try to hurt me? You know, is, is like, who's like, what's next? What's next? And I just love that when I walk in there, I don't got to worry about anything. I could be with my husband or not. I, I feel safe and it's a family and it's community. And that's why, that's why I say it's the best gym out there because it's just, it's really, honestly, for me, Big Tex is a safe haven. That place, I walk in and I just feel like, okay, I'm home. I'm good. Now I, I can get to work and get done what I want to get done and fulfill my passion and destiny knowing that I'm okay. I don't got to worry about anything. So I just want people to know, yeah, if y'all are in the Austin area, heck, wherever you are, you want to come visit, just send me a message. Let me know. I got you. You guys you guys are always welcome. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I'll be going back to Austin anytime soon, but... Uh... <laughs> If you do, you if, know where to find it. Yeah, if, if you ever see me back in Austin, something went south out here real bad. So <laughs> um, that's that's a that's a whole other other tale. Like, oh. I, I, there's no like legal troubles. Is what I, let's get that out of the way. It's just uh, <laughs> there's a there's it's a the harder you try to explain, the worse it gets. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right good. there, You're good. all my exes live in Texas. Coming on, or uh, well, you know, you never know. <laughs> it's it's a. Stop while you're at it. Yeah, man. What's, yeah, going, what's yeah. going on right now? What are you trying to accomplish right now? <laughs> He's at a loss for words, y'all. Yep, there it is. It's the first time that's ever happened. There. Yes, I love when I do that to people. Get that, get that <laughs> camera out of my face. <laughs> no, but uh, no, I, there's still all kinds of people out there that I love and I really appreciate and um, wish nothing but the best for. Yeah. It's just, uh, I got a lot of a lot of good things I need to keep working on out here first before, uh, venturing on down South. Yeah. Back, <laughs> back a little, back a little East. Yeah. But anyway, sure. um, well, thank you so much. Yeah, um, thank you, man. It, it's it, good talking to y'all. It takes some serious guts to, to jump on and, and let it out. Like, let, let people see your dirty laundry and yeah. and then just be like, yeah, but I'm washing it. Shut up. You know, like that's yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're good. <laughs> Live we're, we're, we're folding this yep. stuff now. We, we may got to wash it again, but yeah. we're getting there. We're getting somewhere. Yep. You know, and then uh, let me let me get back into my old biblical days. Right. Let me, let me, on, let preach, me, sir. Let me jump. Uh, I got to shrug the sh Satan off for a second. Ah, come on. We're all washed clean in the blood of the lamb. <laughs> I'm leading around a couple laps around the, the church right now. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> Be yeah. sanctified. Uh, yeah. I'm speak that over you. I'm going to go home and read Job. <laughs> Dude, that's so too man. If you want to talk about turmoil and coming out and having faith. And, and, and getting over shit. <laughs> right? Literally, yeah. like yeah. everything taken from you. Whew, come on. It's okay. You're fine. Yeah. And also, it's the only book of the Bible that mentions dinosaurs. <laughs> now you know. Well, 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 it, well it, it may have not and been. And going it, back to your children's I'm, I'm, children's I'm, I'm, ministry days. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it may have not actually been dinosaurs, but he mentioned two great large beasts that no man could like, like conquer, and the, the, the Leviathan and the Behemoth. Dude, that right there alone is a freaking sermon. But again, I'm a preacher's kid. What do you expect? 
like put some huge giants in front of me and we're going to, we're going to find a way to turn that story around too. Well, I mean, just because the, me and the almighty have, you know, I have my fists up doesn't mean I don't remember everything I got taught growing up. So. Right. Stuff's well, I, I always say it's woven in my DNA. Yep. I cannot separate from it. And I wouldn't want to. Oh man. My, my grand, my dad's parents are in a traveling bluegrass gospel band. So. Nice. I mean, banjos and Jesus was just life. <laughs> yeah. It's so funny. It's so funny how um, I say like preacher's kids were a breed of our own. And somehow, some way, dude, we always flock to each other. It's always, oh, my grandma and grandpa were in ministry or my daddy's a pastor too. Or it's funny because my husband, he's Jewish and I'm a preacher's kid and my roommates, he, his daddy's a preacher. And, you know, his, he, one of our other good friends, her daddy's a preacher. So he's like, why do you, why is everyone around me preacher's kids? I don't get it. I'm like, dude, some way, somehow we find each other. Yeah. We're like vampires, dude. We're like the Cullens. We just flock to each other. <laughs> I don't know. I think maybe we just all see the damaged, broken pieces of each other. Yeah. And we're like, all right, dude, I understand you. I got you. And you wrangled the, you wrangled <laughs> the lone Israelite in town and you got him. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, at least he's the hottest one out there, so <laughs> I did well. Hey, there you I did go. Well. There you go. Well, um, I'd like to give some love to uh, Royalty Nutrition. That's royaltynutrition.com. It is a veteran-owned and operated supplement company that I've been proudly working with for years. They take pride in not using fillers or junk to make their supplements, and they don't promise you any fake trash either. They just help you get the job done along the way. Check them out. That's Royalty Nutrition. Dot com. Also, okay. give some more love to Gorilla Gains. That's Gorilla Gains with the Z. If you want to check out their website, that's www.gorilla-gains.com. It is owned and operated out of Austin, Texas. Check them out. They're owned by uh, owned and operated by some great people that I know really well. They make apparel that you can wear in the gym and out of the gym. On top of, they also make lifting equipment that helps keep you safe while you train. I used my straps today because I was feeling a little weak in the hands. Also, I, I talked a little bit about it earlier, but the FitOps Foundation. Without the FitOps Foundation, I would have never have become the coach that I am today. Check them out at fitops.org. It is a not-for-profit organization that helps veterans rediscover their purpose after active duty military service and not only teaches them to be personal trainers, but to be high qualified personal trainers, earning the title of CVFO, that's Certified Veteran Fitness Operative. If you're looking for a great not-for-profit to donate to, that's fitops.org slash donate. Paul, tell them how it is. Well, <laughs> well, let me tell you about my body that's doing so much better now, and that's all due to advance physical therapy and you can go ahead and check them out they're located in gilbert off pigley and pecos and they are literally putting this old body back together slowly but surely and uh any guys i know we're dealing with the whole covid shit we're all going through it and there's a bunch of people that struggle with addiction and unfortunately right now we're not able to attend any meetings because of the social distancing however there are a lot of zoom meetings going on I actually just spoke to a brother of mine two days ago that he does a Zoom meeting uh, every Tuesday night. If you want to check him out, his name is Jeff Kemelik, and you can check him out on Instagram. I've drawn a blank on the name of his Instagram, but you can look up Jeff. His last name is spelled C-A-M-A-L-I-C-K. And then if you want, <laughs> you can uh, check out online as well. You can pull up the... Um, AA Phoenix and their website is aaphoenix.org and you can go ahead and check out to see what meetings are going on in your local area. And that's all I got. Ryan. Well, this couldn't this couldn't happen without Buy to Buy Studios, Paul. Right, and I think t Ryan owns Buy to Buy Studios, doesn't he? Yeah, and he is the owner, operator, and he makes sure these podcasts go super smooth. Really smooth, and it, he so, also moves things too, right? Yeah, if you were to go to what is it, buy to buy dot com, I believe that you could schedule a delivery of something that you bought to your house from someone who takes all the proper COVID uh, precautions. Yes, uh, he actually just delivered a bed to my house today. Oh my god! Yes, did and a fantastic job. Did too. he? Did he ding the walls? No, or nothing. 
Set oh. your house on fire or nope. anything? Wow, what a magical man. Yeah, he really is. Check him out. It's buy to buy <laughs> dot com. <laughs> <laughs> Marsha, thank you so much. Uh, can you stay on for a second after we go, go off the live? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. Well, but thank you for this conversation. I really do appreciate it. Yes, thank you very well, much. Thank y'all. It's an honor, guys.